Hey, this is Arn Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. I get asked about multi-machine rendering a lot, so while it's not the most exciting subject, I figure I'd make it into a video tutorial that was easy to understand. When you're working on a project that's particularly heavy, you know, render times can get pretty long, and while that may be okay for an overnight situation, if you need something done fast, then Adobe has given you two options for multi-machine rendering, meaning the ability to have two or more machines working together to render out the same project at the same time. One option is to install After Effects on one computer and to install the After Effects render engine on the rest of the machines. The advantage of this is that you need only one license of Adobe After Effects Professional and you can install the render engine on as many computers as you'd like. I'm not going to talk about the render engine because there's plenty of documentation on it and there are just too many variables because of all the rules that need to be adhered to, especially if you're working on multiple platforms and have network drives mapped differently on those machines. All in all, it doesn't make for a very good video tutorial and it's just too much information to cover. So if you want to know how to use the render engine, check your After Effects help files. What I'm going to cover is how to do a multi-machine render over a network of computers that all have the full version of After Effects installed, not the render engine. Now the advantage of doing it this way is that there are much fewer pitfalls. First off, because the computers aren't actually communicating with each other, it works cross-platform and in some situations cross-version. It doesn't require a pro version of After Effects and has only a few basic rules. Also, it doesn't require you to have any dedicated render boxes, meaning that you don't need to have special computers that only have the render engine installed. If you're like me and on a limited budget, having computers that just sit there a lot of the time not being used just isn't cost effective. The work that I do requires a multi-machine render only occasionally at best, and buying a computer for just rendering isn't worth it to me. And frankly, multi-machine rendering isn't all that it's cracked up to be because, as you'll soon see, you don't really end up with a final product, which could mean an extra render pass through After Effects. So you don't want to do it unless you have to. Okay, let's talk about setting it up. Once you're ready to render your composition, choose Composition, Make Movie, which brings up the render queue. To do a multi-machine render, you have to render an image sequence, like a JPEG, TIFF, or Targa sequence. Unfortunately, single file renders, such as a QuickTime or AVI movie, cannot be rendered by more than one machine. So, to render an image sequence, we're going to need to make some changes to the output module settings. Click on the word lossless here next to output module to open the output module settings. Let's change our format from QuickTime Movie or AVI or whatever it says to Targa Sequence. And then click on the format options to bring up the Targa options dialog and set it to whatever you need. I want to render with an alpha channel so I'll set it to 32 bits per pixel and then I'll click OK to confirm it. Also, if you're rendering with an alpha channel, which I'm doing, make sure that the channels are set to RGB plus alpha, and that color is set to straight unmatted. I'm not going to get into the whole straight versus pre-multiplied thing right now, but for a video going into a non-linear editor or even back into After Effects, things will look a lot better if they're rendered straight. You know what? Maybe that's a good subject for another tutorial. Anyway, you'll notice that our audio output options at the bottom here are grayed out. And that's because an image sequence can't contain audio. So we're going to have to revisit that later to get some audio out of After Effects. Anyway, click OK to confirm. And you'll now see that the Output 2 area now has a name plus these numbers in brackets, which tells you that this will render as an image sequence. Next, we need to get into the render settings by clicking on the word Best Settings, or whatever is listed here next to the render settings. This brings up the render settings dialog, and the thing that we're most concerned about here is the grayed out area that says skip existing files allows multi-machine rendering. Now we can engage this option right now because the option called use storage overflow is enabled. In brief, storage overflow is used when your render is too big for your hard drive, so that After Effects will try your next available drive when it runs out of render space. The thing is that storage overflow works against us for multi-machine rendering because all of the images in our sequence need to be rendered to the same folder on the same hard drive or this just won't work. So if we uncheck the storage overflow option, then the skip existing files option becomes available. I want to point out that if you haven't first chosen to render an image sequence, then even when you uncheck use storage overflow, the skip existing files option will not be available, since QuickTime movies or AVIs can't be rendered by more than one computer at a time, as I mentioned earlier. Only image sequences have this ability. Anyway, once skip existing files is available, click on the checkbox to enable it, and click OK. 
Now After Effects knows to render only frames that haven't been rendered already. Now as I mentioned, you need to have all of your computers rendering to the same drive, so that means it needs to be a drive with network permissions. Now that drive should ideally be on a server, or if you don't have one, on one of your workstations. If your computer is both rendering and serving as the render drive, you'll lose a little bit of speed that way, but so long as every computer you're rendering with can access the render folder, then it really shouldn't matter. So to set up the network render, Click on the Output 2 name and set a new name and location for the images. You probably want to create a new folder to render to as this will end up being a lot of images. Remember, if you're working at 30 frames per second and working on a 30 second spot, that's 900 image files. In my case, I've already got an empty folder on a shared drive that I'm going to render to, so I'll navigate to that folder. Once you're in the folder you want to render to, click Save to confirm the location. Normally this is the point where you start rendering. But, since we're going to be doing rendering on many machines, we need to save the file first by choosing File, Save, or Save As. Once the file is saved, you should copy all the files referenced in the project to each computer that will be rendering. If you're working from a network folder, you don't have to do this, but unless you've got a really fast network and network drive, it's highly recommended that each computer has its own copies of all referenced footage files. Remember, it's only temporary. You can always erase these duplicate files when the render is done. If you don't do it this way, you could take a huge render hit. Now copying these files can be a real big pain in the butt, especially if you don't have your files organized. So let me say this. Dude, get organized! It's hard enough working on a regular project when your files are all over the place, but on a network project, as they say in my city, forget about it. I did an audio podcast on working better in After Effects that might help you with organization if you don't already have a system for that. You can find it at the Creative Cow After Effects podcast wherever you subscribe to your podcast or of course at www.creativecow.net forward slash AE podcast. Anyway, if your project files are a mess, are full of unused files or double references, have source files located in several folders and hard drives and you need to get them organized quickly, after Effects has several tools for doing that. If you go into the File menu, we can see several tools for cleaning up and organizing our files. They are Consolidate All Footage, which removes duplicate files from the project and relinks everything to just one source file. Next is Remove Unused Footage, which gets rid of any unused files in the project. After that we've got Reduce Project, which if you first select the composition or compositions you want to keep intact and then choose this tool in the file menu, it will remove anything, and I mean anything, not being used in those compositions. And finally, Collect Files, a tool for copying and collecting your reference source files into one location. I'm not going to get into the specifics of these tools, but at the risk of sounding like a broken record here, there's plenty of information on them in your help files if you need it. Anyway, once you've copied your files to every computer, on each computer, open the project file. And then in After Effects, again, on every computer, get into the render queue and click the render button. They don't all have to be started at the same time for this to work, but you'll get the most bang for your buck if you start the renders as close together in time as possible because they can all start working together immediately. So how does network rendering work? Actually, it's really very simple. When you hit render, each machine begins to render to the network folder. Since we told it to skip existing frames, each machine checks to see what frames are missing in the sequence. So the first available frame is picked up by the first available computer. As soon as it takes responsibility for that frame, it creates an empty dummy file or a placeholder file for that frame. By doing this, even though the frame has not actually been rendered yet, every other computer sees the file thinks that the frame has been rendered and moves on to the next available frame instead of trying to render the same frame. In other words, by creating a placeholder file, the computer keeps all of the machines from trying to render the same frame at the same time and therefore frees up the other computers to work on the next open frames. Now on the downside of this method of multi-machine rendering, if you stop a render on one of the machines, the particular frame that that machine was working on will likely not get rendered, because by then all of the other machines will have probably moved on past that frame number, so you'll lose that frame in the multi-machine render. The good news is that when you stop the render, the placeholder file is removed, and if you restart the same render on any machine, it will render the first available frame, which happens to be your missing frame. Best of all, since the render is set to skip existing frames, it will not attempt to overwrite the already rendered frames, so you won't lose any data. Okay, a couple of really big pitfalls here. 
Make sure that all of your fonts and plugins you use in your project are installed on every machine you are rendering off of, or this just won't work. You can't expect things to look the same if they aren't working with the same tools, right? Another big issue is the audio. Don't forget image sequences can't contain audio, so that means you have to create an audio file separately. In After Effects, in your composition, choose Composition, Make Movie. In the Render Queue, get into the Output Module settings again and change the format to something that supports audio. You could choose a WAV file or even AVI or QuickTime. I'm going to choose QuickTime and then I'll disable the video output. Make sure all the settings down here in the audio output are what you need and then click OK. Once that's done, just hit render. You'll find that your audio file renders much, much faster than your video file. As I mentioned earlier, one of the big downsides of multi-machine rendering is that you don't really have a final product when you're done. By that I mean that you don't have a movie that you can play. Generally, a nonlinear editor like Final Cut Pro or Avid or Premiere Pro can import image sequences. But image sequences take a lot longer to import and render out in most cases, so if you give it to your friendly neighborhood video editor, he or she might become your grumpy neighborhood video editor and may even insist and possibly scream that you get off your lazy animator butt and re-output as a quick time movie so that in the meantime, they can go out and have another cigarette or beer or whatever it is that they do while they're waiting for you to finish your renders. Hmm. Oh, and uh, if you're listening to this and you're one of the video editors I work with regularly, I must be talking about someone else. <clears throat> Okay, so in order to avoid the problem, or if your final goal was to have a QuickTime video, we need to reassemble the image sequence and audio in After Effects for output as a video. So let's get to it. In After Effects, let's import our image sequence and audio. Choose File, Import, Multiple Files. In the Import Multiple Files dialog, navigate to your image sequence and select any file in there. Make sure that Import As is set to Footage and that Targa sequence is checked on. Click Open to import the file. The Interpret Footage dialog pops up asking about the alpha channel. Remember, I rendered straight, so I'm going to choose Straight Unmatted. You might choose something different for your footage. Click OK to confirm. Again, the Import Multiple File dialog pops up. Navigate to your audio file and click Open to open it. This time, when the Import Multiple Files dialog pops up again, I'll click Done because I have no more files to open. If you're not working at 30 frames per second, you may need to use the Interpret Footage dialog to change the way that After Effects is looking at your image sequence. Generally, After Effects sets all image sequences to 30 frames per second unless you've changed it in the preferences. I'm working at 30 frames per second, so I'm good. Anyway, I'll drop this image sequence onto the New Composition button, which creates a composition the same size and length of my footage. Then, I'll drop this audio file in there as well. Now I'll choose Composition, Make Movie, and then set it up to render as a QuickTime or other video with audio. This render will go a lot faster than your original image sequence rendering, but it will still not go as fast as you like it to. As I mentioned earlier, when your source is an image sequence, it takes a lot longer to render out of After Effects. By the way, earlier I mentioned that in certain cases you could do a multi-machine render across different versions of After Effects, meaning that if you originally created your file in After Effects 6.5, for example, and then open it on another computer with After Effects 7, then you can still share the render across both versions because version 7 can work with older files like 6.5. On the other hand, if you save the file in After Effects 7, you of course won't be able to open them in After Effects 6.5 and so you can't share the render in that case. Well, that's multi-machine rendering without the render engine. Hope it helps you get the job done in time. Thanks for watching. Once again, this is Aron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net.